Hi everyone and welcome back to designing a website in Figma. In today's video we are going to be looking at a blog listing page, meaning this page that is going to feature our most important and most recent articles on our fictional blog. Let's take a look at this sketch that I have prepared and examine what we are about to do. So. Uh, as you can see, we get this simple layout where you get obviously the header that we already have. Then we get the blog headline as well as one main featured article with the article image. And then as you can see here, we get some kind of categories or tags that we can use to sort these articles that are, that are going to be shown right below these tabs. So basically the idea here is to essentially use this group of buttons, these group of tags as a filter and then you're going to get this matrix of articles. So let's uh, take a look here what we're going to do. So what we're definitely going to need are some kind of new components. So we will be creating new components similarly to basically all these previous pages where with each page we have created some kind of um, or actually even with each new section we have created new components uh, this is going to be no different there will definitely have to be a component with variants for these tabs for this tab navigation for these tags right here and then there's gonna have to be the article component right so an individual article component I don't think that this area with one featured article that this is gonna have to be a component because after all this is not gonna be replicated across the page however with these articles that are repeating as you can see in this type of grid you will get multiple instances of this article so it's practical to use a component for for this right so whenever you have something that is essentially repeating across a page or across multiple pages in your web design it is good to think about using components for that specific purpose right so Let's, uh, let's get started with this and let's start small, right? Let's start with these individual articles. I'm going to press T on my keyboard and then type article and article, right? And this is probably going to be H3. So let me go to text and select H3 from our menu. If you are wondering how we got these text styles, we have defined that in the initial episodes of this series so if you're confused and you want to know how we created all this that you can see on the screen definitely go and check out the previous episodes of designing a website in Figma. Once I have that I am going to go to assets and search for a button and here we have a button I'm gonna drop that right here and for this article we are going to be using the no background variant right so let me reiterate on this we have we have a button component that has two variants one is default and one is without a background right so as you can see here we are using with the variant that has no background i'm going to change the button text to read now because the action that you want to take with an article component is obviously going to be reading it so that's why I went for this text. Then let me select this, press Shift A to add an auto layout, press Enter, and then with both of these, I'm going to set that to fill container, right? For those that have been watching previous episodes, you are probably very familiar with this workflow where we create an auto layout and then we make sure that the contents are fill container so that we get a responsive behavior like this. With this button, however, I think we should keep that actually at hack contents. So let me set that back to hack contents. Let me rename this, this auto layout to text area, right? You will soon see why I'm doing this. So this is going to be the text area and then I'm going to create a tag. I'm going to create a tag. So as you can see here, we are going to have like three or four categories maybe. And each category is going to have a different name, right? For example, you will get uh, people, technology, productivity, right? You get, you get different categories of your blog. So let me actually create something that will be represented in this text area that will represent this category, right? So let me type in category, very simple. And then let me change this to tagline, 
right? Another style that we have defined way back. So I'm then going to go to type setting and set this to auto width so that it's basically hugged, right? Uh, and then I'm going to press shift A to add an auto layout around this. And then I'm gonna add a fill that's gonna be white and then rounding as well, right? So we can see how we are creating a bit. This looks like a button for now, but we are going to shrink this. We are going to make this quite small. So in terms of the vertical padding, this is going to be like four. The horizontal padding is gonna be like, I don't know, maybe eight. Uh, so you're gonna get this tiny rectangle and that's going to be our, uh, basically our category tag, right? I'm going to select this, rename this to category tag or just actually just tag. This is going to be our tag. And then I'm gonna turn this into a component and then I'm going to look for that in our assets panel on the left side, right? So here's the tag. I'm going to drop that right here into the text area auto layout. So we are using the tag in our text area auto layout. Additionally, I'm going to select the text directly, right? The text object within the tag auto layout. And under content, I'm going to create a new text property. And this text property is going to be called tag text, tag text, right? So now we can easily change this to category two, right? And it's gonna update right here. We're, we're not yet going to do that. We are now going to work on finalizing the article component, right? So the article component is going to be right here. Let me do a couple of things. First of all, I'm going to add a background that's gonna be white. Then let me add some padding like 16, horizontal and vertical. And then, then let me reduce the spacing to, I don't know, like 12 maybe. And then let me use some, some tiny corner rounding, like again, probably just 12 or something like that. So this is going to be our base for our article component. You can see it's responsive and you get category tag, name of the article and a button. Um, I'm going to change the color of this tag component to be slightly darker so that you can recognize the tag against the background, right? So let me, for example, go for like this really, really light gray color. Um, I think I'm going to reduce the opacity of the button to around 60, maybe. And this is going to serve as a basis for our article component. Now we need to find an image. So far, we are just gonna go for some kind of a placeholder. So again, we are going to use our favorite image from, uh, from this website. Let me use this one, this colorful, beautiful image. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make sure that this is set to fill, right? So when I have this image, it's set to Fill. This ensures that when we change the size of this container, basically the image is not going to get deformed. Rather, it's going to be arranged in such a way that it fills out the space and that you get uh, basically just cropping of the image. So you can use any size and the image is not gonna be deformed. That's our point, right? So let me select this image and then move that over here. I'm gonna move this on top of the image by pressing, oh, actually I don't have to press anything because it's already on top of the, the image, right? So let me position that approximately or like this. Uh, when it comes to the size of the image, I think I'm gonna shrink this to be about, I don't know, like 140 maybe, probably, yes. So. Now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna select this text area and then this image, and then I'm going to press Shift A to add an auto layout. I'm gonna press Enter and with both of these selected, right, so you have the image eight as well as the text area uh, auto layout, I'm gonna set that to fill container. So again, it's gonna become responsive like this. So this is great, we are getting there, but I think uh, what needs to happen now is we need to get rid of this. We kind of want to push this upwards, right? Move that closer together so that the image is, covers this whole area, is covered by the bottom part of the image, right? And then what, what needs to be done about this is select this image and then go to corner radius over here, independent corners, 
and then remove the last two values. So what's gonna happen now is this. As you can see, this corner becomes sharp, and then this one as well, right? So both of these corners are sharp. This text area has a corner radius of 12. Since we would like this image to be all the way here, something is gonna have to be moved. And that something, it's gonna be the spacing between these two items. So basically what we wanna get is negative spacing, right? So if we increase this spacing, you can see that a space is not surprisingly gonna be created. But if we go all the way to zero and then we continue going into the negative area, you can see that these two objects are going to start to overlap. And we are going to set this spacing to minus 12. Remember the 12 point radius on this auto layout? This is no coincidence that the spacing needs to be negative 12 to actually match this, um, this corner, right? And now for this image, I'm actually gonna remove the corners from all sides. So this is gonna be completely sharp. And then we're gonna set the rounding on the whole frame for auto layout. So let me set this to 12, right? And then it's still not being reflected in the image. And when, what needs to happen for this to be reflected is I need to check clip content. So now you can see it's going to be clipped and this whole thing is going to become rounded. So now let's see if I do this, you can see how it nicely changes size, it's responsive and the image is changing as well while maintaining these corners as rounded, these as well and then this area is overlapping. So that's great. So now that we finished this auto layout, let me rename this to article or actually blog article preview or something like that. And then I'm gonna turn this into a component to be easily able to replicate this, right? So now let me do a couple things. First, we are going to have multiple categories. So let me create at least another one variant that's gonna have a different text. So it's gonna be category two, for example. And we have to break this. Yeah, so we have created, actually, we have created a component property that we now have to detach. And actually, we are probably not gonna use that. So apologies for that. We're gonna remove this text property for now, which is gonna have category one and category two, right? And we are going to rename this property to category, and then we're gonna have one and two, right? We are not gonna use the component property, the text component property, because we are going to be changing the categories and the text on this level by variance, essentially, right? So, but where we actually are going to use component properties is this component. So let me select this headline, and then under content, I'm going to create a new component property and this is going to be called article name, right? So article name. And then since both of these are components, all that we have to do is go to properties and then with this component selected and then click on this plus and go and go to expose properties from nested instances. If you don't see this option, that's probably because you haven't enabled beta features. So go to Figma settings and try to enable that there. So I'm going to click on that and then expose properties from tag and button as well. Why are we doing this? Let me show you right away. If I use this component, right? So I'm gonna search for blog article preview. I'm gonna drop that right here. We're gonna use this instance. I can do these things. I can change the article headline, change the article headline, right? So that's one thing. I can also change the article category like this, right? Directly on this component. And also I can change the text of a button, right? Text of a button, I can change that right here. Let me reset all this, but you can see with this structure that we have enabled, we can easily do all these things. So that's very easy, makes it very easy to work with these, these components, right? Additionally, what needs to be done is we have to create this whole interaction where we get these categories that you can switch through to see individual, basically a list of different articles, right? So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna use this, I'm just gonna use this as an instance, detach that instance, and then create a whole new component from this, right? So let me increase the 
padding. Let me use a different text. So let's go for like paragraph text. This is going to be all articles. Let me use text placeholder right here. And I think I'm gonna increase this padding additionally to 16 horizontally and 12 vertically. And then let me turn that into a component. And now again, we are going to create a component property. So let me select this text directly go to content, create component property, and this one is gonna be called text, right? So this one's gonna be text placeholder. And then let me create another variant and then another variant. Why are we doing this? So this is going to be the default state. So let me go to this uh, component and change this property to state. We're gonna have a default state. Then we're gonna have a hover state, so hover. And then we're gonna have a selected state, select. And the selected state is going to be black. So let me change this to black, the background, and the text is going to be white to be actually visible, right? So you get default, hover, and selected, right? And what we're gonna do additionally is actually make, with the hover state, make the background darker. So like this even and then let's make sure we have an interaction that uh, is going to go as follows from the default state while hovering we are going to go to this state so i'm going to connect the first one to the second one and then under interaction details i'm going to go while hovering change to state hover and it's going to be instant right let me use this let me actually use this on our page and let's test this, right? So, whoops, design, let's test this. So, launch. So here I get uh, this object that we have just created and when I hover over this object, it's gonna darken, right? So it works as intended. That's great news. Let me go back and here's what we're gonna do now. We are going to, using this component, and this component, right, instances of these two, we are going to create a whole new component. So let me use this component, this instance of this blog article preview, and then let me duplicate this five times, all right? Let me create six articles in total. And I'm gonna select all these and go to tidy up and make sure the spacing is 24 similar to the spacing we get in between these individual columns right and then also make sure the width of one individual article is going to be is going to be 270 but this means we can afford to have basically four columns of these right so let me change the width of all these to 270 and then let me duplicate this once more again arrange them into a grid, so tidy up, and 24, 24, right? So we get a grid of articles, essentially. Then I'm going to use an instance of this tag, right? And I have just noticed that we are using tag as well as tag. So this is going to be a blog category switcher, right? So that we get different names. And then I'm gonna move that over here and type in category one and then duplicate that two times to get essentially three categories right so category two and then category three right so we get three categories and then we also get one category that's going to be just all articles so all articles right so we get this let me select all of these shift a to create auto layout and then spacing off i think we can do eight so rename this auto layout to category tabs and then i think for the sake of simplicity let me just select all of these and create a frame around this right so we're going to have two rows and i'm going to press command option g to basically get a frame that i'm going to rename to articles articles right now let me select both of these shift a and create a whole new auto layout with spacing 40 and then let me rename this to list, so article listing, right? So it's gonna be article listing. And what we are going to be looking at now is all articles, right? So let me just change the state of this very first block category switcher to select it. And let me uh, make sure to actually switch these categories, right? So we get a mix of all categories essentially. 
one, two, one, two. Doesn't matter because we get all articles essentially, right? I'm going to create one new category right here in the tag component. So category two, uh, three, three, sorry. And I'm gonna change the text to three so that we get third one. And then I can just uh, use three here as well, right? And this whole thing is going to be a component. And this component is going to have four states where each state is going to correspond to one of these being enabled. So let me take this whole thing, turn that into a component and then create three more variants, right? I know this is getting a bit complicated, but we are doing all this to enable basically interactive functions. So let me turn this into a auto layout so that we can easily arrange this stuff. And then just let's make sure that in this variant, we get the category one enabled, the first one, all the others disabled, right? And then with this one, something similar. Now this one's gonna be selected, but this one is not gonna be selected. And then with this one, I think this one's gonna be default and the category three is gonna be enabled, right? And we need to make sure that this corresponds. So let me select the articles frame, press enter and then let's make sure on each of these that the category is actually one. So let me just go one by one and make sure that category one is everywhere, right? So category one, so category one is everywhere. Then with category two, something similar. I'm gonna go one by one and make sure all these are category two, category two, right? Because we are working with category two, category two, two, two everywhere essentially. And then the third one, finally, also that's gonna be category three everywhere. I can't select all at once, right? As you can see, this disappears. So I have to just go one by one and make sure it's all set to three. It's hard to recognize now, but let me do this one thing where I'm going to change the colors for individual categories, right? So let me actually, category one is gonna be, let's say that's gonna be green. Category, category two is gonna be like yellow, right? So it's gonna be yellow like this. And category, category three is going to be, I don't know, blue. Now take a look here. When we got all articles, this is going to be a mix of all colors. Category one is just gonna be one category. Category two is gonna be just one and category three as well, right? So let me change these colors back. And then we actually have to start prototyping this. From category one, when you go, when you click on category one, you're gonna switch over this component to category one. And no matter which variant you're going from, they are all going to lead to category one, right? So on click, change to category one. Category two is gonna lead in all cases, not surprisingly, to category two. So we're gonna have to just go through these. That's category two. And then category two as well from here. And then category three, you guessed it, that's gonna go to the very last one, to the third category. And then we have to also set the all articles going back to all articles, right? So all articles, be careful to select this category switcher directly and this one as well. So this is getting kind of complicated. If you're still following, you are really dedicated. So I applaud you. Um, if there is anything unclear, let me know in the comments below. Right, so if there's anything not understandable, let me make sure you understand everything, leave a comment below. Right, so I'm going to enlarge this and then I'm going to use this component that's called article listing and let me paste that right here. So, right here, so center. And then let me launch the prototype and see if we actually got this to work. So this is what we get right now, as you can see, it's it's, let me just change the color of this block component to actually be um, this color. So let me sample that from here because it's, it's on a white background, right? And then uh, let me go back. When I'm on the block right now, I have all articles selected. You can see we get category one, three, one, two, and so on. And then I can hover over these individual categories 
I can select the first one and we get just category number one, right? Then I can go to category two and we just get category number two and then three and we get just three, right? So brilliant, that is working. Let me continue working on this. I'm gonna actually, I think I'm gonna disable this image and just replace that with some singular color so that it is not as confusing. Right, so if we get this one image repeating everywhere, I feel like that's very confusing. So I think this is easier to comprehend right now. And let's continue. So I think we got this part covered. So now let me actually use this headline, the blog, and let me rename this to, or retype this to blog with a capital B, right? So that's going to be our blog. It's gonna be right here. And then one article is gonna be featured. Right, so let me copy this text, use that as H2 and type in, this is a featured article, right? Featured article, the most important piece of content, right? And I'm gonna shrink this to about this size. And I think I can also use like paragraph text to describe this article. So this is gonna say like this um, very short description of what's actually actually being discussed in this article. Maybe the first sentences, right? So this is our description. And then we are going to use a button as well. And this button is gonna say read now. So read now. And again, select all of these, shift A, press enter, deselect the button, fill container, shift enter to actually change the size of this and align that to the left, right? So this is what we get. And here I think we could use actually an image to um, paste that right here. I think it's, it could be like, I don't know, about right here. Yeah. And then let's just select both of these again and create an auto layout. It's going to have significant um, paddings. So 40 maybe. I am going to also set the spacing to I think 24, 24. Yeah, let me use some kind of background. For example, again, this one. So looking at this, this definitely will have to be like more episodes, right? I think we are going to be finalizing the design in, in multiple episodes. So let me, actually, let me set this to 24. 24 and then this one is gonna have additional paddings, right? So 24 as well, 24 as well. This is gonna be fill container maybe. Yep, I like this one. So let me even reduce this further to 12. I think that could be nice. Uh, fill container in height on the image and then add some more padding on this area, right? So let's go for 40. Yep, that works. And then let me kind of increase the width of this so that it covers all these columns up over here. Yeah, I like this. Let me actually shrink this so that we got this width approximately. Yep, I think that works. And I think we could make this a little bit darker. 24 in the rounding, 12 on the image. And yeah, this is what we get. So. This tutorial is becoming extremely long, so let me just stop it right here and then let's finalize this on in the future episode. So let's check what we have so far. We got this blog page, this blog listing page that we can access from the homepage by going to resources and then blog, right? Remember setting this up a couple of episodes ago. So when I click on blog, then I get to this area, to the blog listing page, and then I get one main article, and then I get a basically a listing by categories of individual articles, right? So all these are components, uh, and I can now hover over these categories and sort all these articles by categories, right? As you can see, it looks more like a wireframe at this point. Uh, so all that we need to do is look for some images and actually start filling this in with data. You can see that it actually provides us with a working filter, with a working uh, category switcher, right? And then we get one main article that maybe is gonna have to be drawn out to the full width of this, right? Yeah, probably. So yeah, the main thing is this switcher right here is working and we can access this page from around our page. So it kind of is set 
within the context of this whole website, right? So again, apologies for this tutorial being super, super long, but sometimes uh, these things are simply quite complicated to set up if you want to get a convincing functionality in your prototypes. In the upcoming episodes, we are going to be finalizing this part of the website, this blog page, and let's just see where this takes us. So thanks for tuning in. I applaud you for watching this all the way to the very end, and I will see you in the next one.